Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. It's time for another Deep Sky Challenge. And this one is one I've never seen before. We're going to try to see a tiny nebula called M1-64, also known as PK-64 plus 15.1. Don't confuse the M in this object for Messier. Charles Messier completed his famous catalog in 1781. And the M in this object stands for Minkowski. Rudolf Minkowski, a German-American astronomer who made a list of almost 200 planetary nebulae in 1946. And it was based on objective prism survey plates taken by William Miller on a 10-inch refractor at Mount Wilson Observatory near Pasadena, California. Rudolf Minkowski is an interesting person. He, along with Bade, is known for dividing supernovae into type 1 and type 2 based on their spectral characteristics, which is a fascinating subject for another day. <laughs> but for today, we're interested in his list of nebulae. This one, M1-64, or PK-64 plus 15.1, is a planetary nebula located in the constellation Lyra, the Lyre. I still to this day want to call it the Harp. Can I call it the Harp? <laughs> Old habits die hard. Anyway, it's in the same parallelogram where you find the much more famous and much easier to see and much larger ring nebula M57. So if you cannot see M1-64, you can look at the ring nebula as a constellation. M1-64 is a planetary nebula and it's magnitude 13. So you'll need a telescope of at least eight inches aperture to see it. And like most planetary nebulae, it's tiny. It's only 17 arc seconds. To locate M1-64, first look for the very bright star Vega, and then look a little southeast of Vega to Zeta Lyrae, which makes one of the corners of the parallelogram. Once you locate Zeta Lyrae, you're going to make a line toward the ring nebula. And M1-64 is almost exactly half the way from Zeta to M57, but just a little bit east of that line. Or you can start at M57 and go 2.3 degrees west-northwest to M1-64. It's not on the Sky and Telescope Jumbo Pocket Atlas, but here's a star chart showing the exact location of M1-64 inside the parallelogram of Lyra. Okay. Here is Lyra, and that bright star is Vega. This is Zeta, and this is Beta. M57 is right here, so you can make a line from M57 towards Zeta, and M1-64 will be right here. M57 is in between Beta and Gamma Lyrae, but if that's easier for you, you could start at Beta and make a line towards Zeta, and about 1.7 degrees between those two stars and just about a half a degree east is M1-64. So you'll just have to judge your distances well and look for a small, faint, gray, fuzzy patch, kind of like the Ring Nebula, only much fainter, much smaller. You cannot see the central star in M1-64, but there is a dim star at the northern edge of the nebula that you might be able to see. If you have a 12-inch telescope, you should be able to detect a shell, and if you have a 15-inch telescope, you might be able to detect a ring. Well, as I said, I've never seen this object, so we'll verify that tonight. I'm going to first try to see it with this 8-inch schmidt cassegrain telescope, and if I can't see it with this telescope, which I should be able to, I think I will, I'll go to an 11-inch telescope, and I should be able to see it with that, and then I'll look with a 15-inch Dobsonian telescope to try to see the ring structure. And I'll sketch M1-64 so you can get an idea of what to look for in your telescope. And if this helps you to locate it, here are the RA and deck coordinates for M1-64. 
The best time to look for this object is summertime when Lyre is high in the sky and as always it helps to go to a dark sky site since it's magnitude 13 and since it's a planetary nebula an O3 filter should help. And I don't know that anyone actually calls it this, but I'm going to call it the Little Ring Nebula. I searched on Google to see if this nebula was called that, and according to Google, the Little Ring Nebula is M57, but I dispute that. I have never called the Ring Nebula the Little Ring, and I've never heard anyone call it that. Moreover, M57 is not little. It's 1.4 by one arc minute. So if you ask me, M1-64 is the Little Ring Nebula. <laughs> okay, when it gets dark, we'll get started. I'm not seeing any fuzzy gray disk. I looked, I'm in the parallelogram where I said to look, but I don't see a fuzzy gray disk. Erica Ricks said she saw it with an 8-inch Dobsonian. But I'm not seeing anything. Uh, so I'm going to go to a bigger telescope. <laughs> Hello again. I'm out here on a second night of trying to see M1-64, the little ring. I didn't see it last night with this 8-inch, but I feel I didn't spend enough time with this telescope. So tonight I'm going to try again. And this time I'm going to try to match the stars that I see in my eyepiece with the stars in the chart you know, in Interstellarum, which does have M1-64 in it, and see if I can pinpoint where I'm supposed to be looking and try to see it again with this 8-inch. I should be able to see it, but I'm not going back to that 11-inch. It's giving me troubles, so change a plan. If I can't see it in this 8-inch, which would be terrible, I will go to the 10-inch Dobsonian. And if I can't see it in that, maybe it's time to throw in the ring. But then I'll go to the 15-inch Dobsonian. And I found out last night that my 15-inch Dobsonian, which uses Argo Navis, has M1-64 in the database. Pretty neat. All right, I'll be back when it gets dark. According to the weather report, it's going to be clear tonight. So I got out some telescopes and opened up the observatory. But those clouds over there are troubling. Unfortunately, that telescope in the observatory is malfunctioning. And in fact, I'm going to have to return it to Celestron. So I'm going to try to see the little ring in this 8-inch mint Cassegrain. This is my third attempt with this telescope. And if I can't see it, I'll try to see it in the 10-inch Dobsonian. So I'm going to turn that light off and give it a college try. Be back soon. I hate admitting defeat, but I, I don't know. I thought I saw it and I put an O3 filter on it and it disappeared. So I don't know. It's confusing going from a Dobsonian to a schmidt cassegrain because the Dobsonian shows an inverted image and the schmidt cassegrain is a mirror reversed which I did take a picture of the star map and I mirror reversed it in Photoshop so I could match the star field, but I'm not sure. I think I saw it, but I can't say for sure. So time to haul out the 10 inch Dobsonian and give it a whirl. Hello again. What a beautiful evening for stargazing. Oh my goodness, it's so clear, it's beautiful. As you can see, it's not quite dark yet, but it's quarter till 10, so I went ahead and polar aligned, and I got M57 in here. What a beautiful, beautiful evening. Check out Sagittarius and the Milky Way. Wow, oh, so pretty, beautiful. There's Altair and Delphinus. Wow, beautiful, beautiful evening. Oh my goodness. Okay, time to look for the little ring. <gasps> wow. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. I finally see the little ring. This is day four of trying to see this damn thing. Admittedly, the conditions have been terrible for a week, but finally I see it. It was so hard to see it. I started with my 31 millimeter, which the field of view was way too big and I couldn't see it. So I next went to this 20 millimeter. I think it has an 82 degree field of view and I could just barely make out this tiny little gray disc of uniform grayness. And then I went to my trusty six millimeter and then I could see it. Whoopee! <laughs> I saw the little ring. Okay, now it's a beautiful evening, by the way. It was touch and go there for a while. There was a massive cloud and I, I didn't know whether it was gonna rain on my equipment or move off and it moved off. Thank you, universe. <laughs> okay, I gotta sketch the star field and the object, but I wanna see if I can see it in a smaller instrument because supposedly you can see it in an eight inch and I didn't give it enough time in my eight inch Schmidt Cassegrain because the conditions were so terrible. I saw the little ring with my 10 inch Dobsonian. It was hard. I think this is the hardest object I've ever seen other than the Horsehead Nebula. And the reason is that at low magnification, you can't see it. You have to just make sure you're in the right star field, check it against your star chart. And then if you are, then magnify. So I went up to 266 times with this four and a half millimeter eyepiece and I could just make out the little gray disc of it. And now I want to magnify some more to see if I can see any structure in this telescope. I don't know if I can. And I'm going to sketch it with the 15 inch and try to get a higher magnification. Um, so let me do that and I'll be right back. I probably look like a crazy person. I went into the house to get my SQM device. That's why I have this eye patch on. <laughs> okay, I went up to 400 times magnification with this three millimeter D-Light eyepiece. And <laughs> it still just looks like a gray disc. I don't see any structure or the, the ring but I saw it. But the curious thing is the O3 filter made it disappear. I don't know. Well, anyway, I saw it. Pretty cool. And I saw it well in the 15 inch telescope. I pumped up the magnification and I, I couldn't see that dot. There's supposed to be a <laughs> dot. <laughs> There's supposed to be a star are right outside of the ring, but I didn't see that. Hello again. This is day four of trying to see M1-64 with this 8-inch McCats grain. Interstellarum and Erica Ricks both said you could see it with an 8-inch telescope, and I couldn't see it, and I was starting to feel bad. I started to feel like something was wrong with me. So I doggedly, doggedly tracked it down, and tonight, I finally saw it. It does not look like much in an 8 inch telescope and I had to magnify 400 times to see it. And an O3 filter did nothing. It was too dark with the O3 filter. I would recommend that even if you're using a go-to mount that you study a detailed star chart like Interstellarum or Uranometria because the star chart and sky and telescopes uh, Pocket Atlas doesn't even have this object in it and it's not detailed enough. And look at it and if you need to reverse it or mirror image it to fit whatever telescope you're using, do that and study the star patterns so you'll know you're looking in the right spot. <laughs> I apologize for the wind noise. It's very clear tonight. Beautiful evening. The Milky Way is gorgeous but it's, it's very windy. So I saw it in an 8 inch telescope and you can too. Let me know if you see M1-64, the little ring nebula. 
Now I'm in the observatory, mainly because it blocks the wind. It's so windy out there, my goodness. But I'm with the nine and a quarter inch telescope because I also couldn't see it with this one on the first two times I tried, but tonight I saw it. I had to magnify it to 400 times with this telescope also to see it. I could not see it at low magnification, so magnify as much as you can. Start out low to get the star pattern that you check against your star chart, and then magnify as much as you can. I didn't find an O3 filter helpful, but I saw it with the 8 inch Schmidt Cassegrain and the 9 and a quarter inch Schmidt Cassegrain. I had to return that 11 inch, it was malfunctioning, but I saw it with the Swan, my 15 inch telescope, and I'll sketch it with that one. Okay, so I saw M1-64, the Little Ring Nebula, in Lyra the Harp. It was very, very hard, <laughs> but I saw it. I finished my sketch. I did the best I could. Very hard to sketch something so tiny. It's only 17 arc seconds. But whoo, whoo, I saw it. <laughs> And so I'm going to conclude now. Don't worry about the bright light, although I do have to dark adapt again because uh, there was supposed to be an aurora tonight. I didn't see anything, but I was very busy. And Saturn has come up, and there's supposed to be a transit of Saturn by its largest moon, Titan. So I'm going to try for that now. But that's it for Minkowski 1-64, the Little Ring Nebula in Lyra. Give it a shot. It's hard. Supposedly you can see it in an 8-inch telescope, but you have to be very patient and definitely go to a dark sky site. I didn't find the O3 filter helpful, so just magnify as much as you can and study the star chart and get familiar with the star pattern would be my recommendation. I hope you can see it. Let me know if you do. That's it for now. See y'all soon. Till then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.